Hey guys, and welcome back. It has been a while, and I really apologize for not uploading. But there's been happening so much stuff over the last couple of months for me, and I really want to share it with you guys. So, first of all, got a new camera, and I'm freaking loving it. So, as you probably saw, I was at Off Festival in Barcelona, and I met some of you guys, and thank you to that guy that called me the tutorial guy. You're awesome, dude. So, so yeah, it was really fun going to Off Festival, and so if you guys want to meet other fellow motion designers, then definitely go next year to Off. So the third thing I've been doing is taking some vacation and really getting the creative juices flowing again. So that's also important to remember. Get your creative juices flowing by stepping away from your computer and getting some inspiration. So let's get into the topic today. The topic today is how to create procedural bubbles soap bubbles in cinema and this technique is really nice because it's procedural so you can alter everything and it will still look pristine so without further ado welcome back and let's jump in to the bubble tutorial So here in cinema, we're gonna make the procedural bubbles. So first of all, let's make a sphere. That's gonna be our bubble. I'm gonna quickly change my viewport so we can see the bubble better. We are going to choose the last mode here, which makes triangles. So this is important for the effect. So what we need to do is set the segments to 32. And that is gonna be our starting point. So now we need to create a cloner and we need to clone these bubbles out into a grid. So we have this. And then we need to duplicate by holding down control, dragging, duplicating this sphere. And we need to go inside of the cloner. We need to check the object mode and then we choose the sphere. So now you can see all the clones are cloned on to one sphere. So now we need to separate these balls a little bit, or these bubbles. So I'm gonna make less bubbles. I'm gonna make 10. And then with my cloner selected, I'm gonna choose a push apart. And as you can see, it pushes all the clones apart. I'm gonna hide my sphere up here. Let's call it cloner object. And let's play around with the pusher part. So the pusher part, we have a range here or a radius. And I'll just set it to 50. I think that should be fine. So we also want some variation to the size of these clones. So we're quickly gonna put a random effect on it and we need to play around with the randomize. So let's turn off position, let's turn on scale, uniform scale, and let's set it to 0.5. Oh, maybe that's a bit too much, 0.4. And then we can go inside of our sphere or our bubble. Let's actually rename this bubble. So if we turn down our push apart, I can see that we also need to turn down the radius of our sphere object. And let's keep the push apart on again. Here, let's turn the radius down to five maybe. R to one. And now we can just play around with the seed of our randomize. So I think this should be good. We have some small, smaller bubbles here and we have some big bubbles here. All right, so now we need to create the mask and the whole setup to make these bubbles look 
a bit nicer because we don't want these intersections, as you can see inside of them, where we have spheres intersecting. And I can even show you it better if I do this. You can see all the spheres are intersecting and it's not looking great at all. So let's jump back and let's do the procedural bit. And let's make this bubble look a bit nicer. So for that, we need to create a instance of this cloner. And we do that by selecting the cloner and then selecting instance. So now we get this instance here. Let's first of all group all the things. So we'll group our our effectors. And then we'll group this and call it mask. And then we'll call this, group this also. Call this object. All right. And the clone object we can just put inside of here. So now we need to work on the mask part. So let's put the cloner inside of a volume builder like this. And let me just switch mode so we can see. Let's also turn off the cloner instance so we can see what we're doing with our, with our volume. So let's set the volume size to two. And as you can see, we don't have these parts of the sphere that are inside. They get masked off. So what we can use this volume builder for is a fields mask. So let me just show you how that works. So if we create a smooth deformer, we can put it inside of our object group here. And I can just turn off the volume builder or actually hide the mask and unhide the cloner instance. And then I can show you what's happening. So the smooth is just shrinking the whole thing. And if we make the smooth like a hundred iterations, you can see it's really getting small. And we can even increase it more to make it even smaller. So let's set it at 100 again. Let's put the stiffness down. <clears throat> and let's go into the fields options on our smooth deformer. Let's drag our volume builder inside of our fields options and let's choose the volume object. And as you can see, something just happened. So let me just explain. So our volume builder, as you can see, is covering all the part of our object right now. So this volume builder is actually a mask and it's actually saying to our smooth deformer, you should apply the smooth here and not outside here. So the problem we've got right now is that our volume builder is the exact same size as our cloner instance. So how do we get the volume builder to be smaller without losing its position? So there's actually an easy way to do this. First of all, I'm just gonna turn off my smoothing so you can see what is going on. And inside of my volume builder, I'm just gonna select dilate and erode. And as you can see, it actually did the opposite of what we wanted. It made it bigger. So that's because our offset number is by standard or by default plus five. And we actually needed to go the other way. So it just should be minus five. And as you can see, if I flick between our instance object and our volume builder, you can see the volume builder is inside the instance right now. That's actually what we need because we only need the inside polygons to be selected and not the outside polygons. So let's hide our mask here 
Let's turn on our smoothing. And what happened? Well, we did miss one important step. So here in our smooth deformer, inside of the fields tab, we need to put a invert. And as you can see, it fixed our problems. And now we get to refine this. And as you can see, it's a bit jagged right now, and it really isn't what we're looking for. So we're gonna increase the resolution. So we can throw a subdivision surface on our cloner instance right here. Let's do that. And as you can see, it almost fixed all the problems. So now we have another problem because if I go to my other view here, you can see we still have curvature inside. And we really want it to just be a line where these two spheres are meeting each other. So I'm gonna go into my smooth deformer and I'm gonna increase the iterations to 300. And let's just wait for it to update. And as you can see, it got closer, but not close enough. So what we can also do is we can go into our volume builder and we can set the voxel size even lower to make the point where it breaks even sharper. And let's just wait for this. Yes, here we go. And we need to move the offset a bit. So let's say minus two. And as you can see, these points up here move closer to the original point we wanted. And I even feel like we can do with a little bit less subdivision. So let's set it to one on each of these. And as you can see, we got a plane that's going right down the object. So where it's meeting the other object, it's totally flat. But I think we have a problem now because we still have some gaps. So let's go back here and let's put this down again to minus four maybe. And minus four seems to work perfectly. So if you want to increase the resolution even more, I would suggest that you put the whole object group inside of a subdivision. And let's only set it to one because otherwise it's a bit too much. So as you can see right now, we have some great geometry where it's meeting, really organic, and we still have a smooth bubble. So let me just go and grab some lighting and some materials and let's test it out. So I've just imported a material here. I'm actually going to show you in part two how to make this material. And I also imported a HDRI from my HDRI pack. So let me just preview this for you guys and let's see how it looks. So yeah, guys, I've just played around with this for a little bit and I finally found something that could illustrate the effect really nicely. And uh, yeah, you can see I have the material here and we have these nice intersections between all of the bubbles and it really makes it look like real bubbles instead of spheres intersecting with each other. So that was it for this procedural bubble tutorial. And if you guys liked the video, then please push the like button underneath the video. And if you have something to share with me, maybe you made your own bubbles, then DM me on Instagram. The link is in the description. And yeah, if you want to buy my light pack, I also have that. That's also in the description. If you want to meet other fellow motion designers and creative people, we have a Discord channel and you can go in there, get some help from anybody and it's really a fun time. So thank you for watching the video this month and hopefully the next video is gonna come sooner than later. But all I have to say for now is just adios. It has been very nice to see you guys 
and stay creative.